This is LSU quarterback Jaden Daniels. And we're talking about all time great production. That's like not even an exaggeration. His EPA per play is the best of all time. Talking about the final season wow. among drafted quarterbacks like going back to the, at least 2000. His total EPA only trails Joe Burrow obviously the LSU connection, his rushing EPA only trails Lamar Jackson, Cam Newton, and then Malik uh, Willis. So it's a scrambling ability. I thought he was very accurate, but the production you can't argue against. To me, this is a debate. How much can this translate and why was he so productive? There's two wide receivers that kind of, you know, helps him out. So we'll have the entire discussion here about Jaden Daniels, just some simplified stats here. 50 total touchdowns compared to just four interceptions in 2023, a simple 3,800 passing yards, 1,100 rushing yards, and one Heisman Trophy. As of this recording, we do not have his height and weight. Jaden Daniels elected to not obviously compete in the NFL Combine, participate in that, but also in the just measurables aspect of that too. But Hayden, let's first gear this conversation towards where Jane Daniels succeeds. And obviously that production there comes with a lot of success on the NFL field. So I think the biggest thing is just his scramble and broken play ability. It's basically unmatched. I think the closest comparison would be to Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson has a little bit more size than what Jane Daniels does, but he had 154 reps last year on either scrambles or on broken plays. He averaged 0.63 EPA, which is basically winning the MVP. And that's on when shit is going bad and he's still <laughs> making the best out of it. Now, sometimes at the end of these runs, yeah. he gets absolutely demolished. And that's why some people are uh, comparing him to Johnny Knoxville. Uh, I think that's going to be the kind of debate here. Yes. When he's scrambling, he's got open field. He is a special, special player. I'm not sure if he has the size to be used in like the quarterback designed run game in like short yarded situations in the red zone, just because he is so skinny. You said that he didn't want to weigh in all throughout. He probably was like 193 pounds, somewhere like that. He's not as stocky as Kyler Murray. He's more like the Bryce young type of size to me. Um, and that's a little bit scary when you're talking about how much can this production actually translate, but man, his scrambling ability is like truly a special talent. Uh, we just have to decide how much of it's going to translate. Yeah, and I do want to add to that final point that you said where he cannot take a normal hit. Uh, there are times when Ooh. in some ways he's trying to add extra yards or doesn't slide or doesn't get out of bounds. And that leads to sometimes turnovers or mm -hmm. gruesome collisions. Um, it's just car crash after car crash that almost chops him in half. Ragdoll effect in many ways. But to that production, he made the the best out of an amazing situation. Like he maximized a tremendous team that LSU had last year. And honestly, that might be underselling it, as you pointed out, a very good offensive line, two potential top 20 picks at wide receivers and Malik neighbors and Brian Thomas Jr. And they built this offense around plays that he was really good at. Mm -hmm. And those numbers speak to themselves. Uh, it actually reminded me a lot of watching the Philadelphia Eagles offense and stay with me with this because okay. you have two premier outside wide receivers in AJ Brown and Devonte Smith. And when you got isolated coverage, either because of single safety looks or because of pressure looks, mm -hmm. he really trusted those guys to win. And he frequently threw down the field because of that. And guess what? Those plays were excellent because the thrower and the wide receiver were fantastic at that. I will add that means there wasn't a ton of middle of the field work. And we'll get into those percentages in a moment. And on top of that, he had just 17% of his passes last season were play action. And if you actually watch the games, about 50% of that 70% was split flow play action and just a tight end leaking out into the flat mm -hmm. and a little dump off. So all of these under center, deep play action types of constructions that we see at the NFL level leading to explosive plays. It wasn't that it was mm -hmm. more so what the Eagles did last year and almost abandoning the middle of the field. And Hayden, I can't tell if it's because he's not comfortable throwing it there or that's just how the offense was designed. And I think that almost leads to even more questions about the evaluation. The hard part is he's going to be turning 24 years old this next right. December. He's been in the college football forever. So the fact that he only threw 22% of his throws over the middle is concerning to me a lot of this offense. And this is a spread offense, which like you said, was perfect for the skill set because you have these two guys that can win downfield from the slot to give them lots of wide open windows. But also if those plays weren't 
uh, wide open. Now, all of a sudden, those wide receivers are way downfield. And here comes Jaden <laughs> Daniels running like a madman. And behind a great offensive line, by the way, that yes. would give him three, three and a half, four, four and a half seconds. So it's almost like, hey, these wide receivers are taking the top off the coverage mm -hmm. and let me vroom, vroom, vroom and yep. pick up 30 yard gains on the ground. Yes. So what I saw with him is I think he has a good pre-snap understanding of coverages and where he wants to get the ball to. He threw a ton of hitch routes across college football. Uh, most offenses, about 14% of their throws are these hitch routes. His was 23%. So I think pre-snap read, if there was off coverage, he wants just to get the ball to Brian Thomas or Malik Neighbors. Sure, he can do that. And then also you see a lot of slot uh, fades. You see go balls, you see posts, you see corners because they have these wide receivers. What you didn't see as much was him going to the second read, the third read, working over the middle. And now we run into the same exact debate. Is he not doing that? Because he knows he can look at his top receiver and then just scramble around and pick up a first down. Or is it because he not he like just doesn't have a good feel for post snap coverages or wanting to throw the ball over the middle of the field, or he doesn't want to take a hit in the pocket to kind of wait for the, the backside route to develop. That's going to be the other concern because I didn't, I wouldn't blame him if he just said, well, I know when I run, it's going to be a first down, right. but if he, if that's not going to work in the NFL, now we have this second layer of mystery where can he actually wait for the backside route to develop and throw the ball over the middle? Because right now, that is a question mark, which is crazy because we're talking about one of the most productive players in college right. football history. But there are like true question marks here. Yeah, that raw production is amazing. But on top of that, there are underlying metrics that kind of lead to more questions. Nate Tice pointed out that his 14.1% scramble rate ranks third among 196 qualifying quarterbacks since 2019, basically only behind Malik Willis in terms of quarterback prospects. Which is not good which is not good. There are other aspects of this where only 50.6% of his pressure dropbacks resulted in a pass attempt. Again, that is 193rd out of 196 qualifying quarterbacks. So you and I constantly talk about, hey, what is the makeup of a quarterback when mm -hmm. he is pressured? Because that's when, hey, the architecture of an offense doesn't go right either the blocking or no one getting open down the field. And so in that moment, it is the quarterback who then elevates everyone. We just talked about his scrambling. I will add his scrambling constantly comes from climbing the pocket, then almost veering out to the edge of the defense and then working up the sideline and just running right by everyone. But I guess my, my biggest concern is that those explosive rushes will be less frequent in the NFL. And that lack of middle of the field work or success, however term you want to do it, or even turning down some of those middle of the field passes mm -hmm. um, becomes accentuated, becomes more prominent in, in the league. Because again, even just that throwing rate when pressured, it means that he is, again, dropping his eyes and running. And I think that that is far more difficult to be mm -hmm. successful in the NFL than it was when he was tremendously successful mm -hmm. at the college level. Now, I still have a first round grade with him because right. this is the NFL quarterbacks is how you uh, take your chances uh, to get into the playoffs. He's my quarterback four, but the reason why I still have him in this kind of early round one tier is it's obviously because of this athletic ability, but also as a passer, I was shocked at how accurate he was. He's I so he consistent was, with that motion too. It is a beautiful, beautiful yeah. stroke. He actually led the class in catchable ball rate on these throws, 15 plus air yards downfield without pressure where you're just your mechanics, how accurate you are by far the number one in the class, basically as like as good as like what CD Stroud was last year. I think that he can actually throw with nice loft on these slot fades, these corner routes. These he throws a mean slot fade. I mean, yes, maybe I his mean, best throw or the best throw of any quarterback in this class yes. is him on slot fades to Brian Thomas and especially Malik Neighbors. Just go back and watch. I think it was that Ole Miss game. They yeah. had like four or five touchdowns just on slot fades. Yeah, and I, that's that's what makes this hard because that slot fade, that slot fade, and then also the scramble ability. Why would you mess around with these other concepts if those are working so well? So like that's the hard part. So I don't want to say he for sure can't do these things we're talking about. We just haven't seen that, and that brings on some of the risk here on top of just being able to survive in the NFL at 195 ish pounds. But I did, I did just want to say as a passer, I yeah. think his accuracy could be the saving grace to this kind of up and down profile. Yeah, super consistent motion like you're talking about, and that leads to tremendous accuracy. Mm -hmm. He is obviously athletic, 
obviously. I do think athleticism comes in different forms and factors when we look at college quarterbacks, right? Um, his straight line scrambling when he gets an alleyway, Whew. exceptional stuff. But I can't say that I sat here and saw small compact movements to work within the constraints of the tackle to tackle mm -hmm. to find those pockets of space to then deliver a football. You know, that athleticism, that mobility didn't necessarily pop up as a passer as much as it did as a pure runner. Would you say the same thing? Yeah, it's kind of almost like the opposite of what Bryce Young did last year, where he was athletic, but he was athletic maneuvering the pocket and then trying to throw the ball. The second Jaden Daniels felt it, he would just take off and run. And that's where his athleticism would kind of show up. And I want to go back to that Ole Miss game because Colt McCoy and I broke it down where there was one play where he took off for an eight yard gain on like third and six. So it was definitely mm -hmm. a first down, but then on this end cut, that was either a second or his third read, who knows we're not in the room. Uh, he turns that down and that would have been a 25 plus yard gain later on in that same Ole Miss contest. He went back and hit a similar dig or in breaking pattern. If you have stuck with us on the channel for this long, you know that in some ways that is similar to Anthony Richardson last year, who would almost learn on the fly of, oh, this was open the first half. I turned it down, but I'm going to hit it in the second mm -hmm. half. The difference with that is Jane Daniels has played five seasons of college football and Anthony Richardson had barely played at all mm -hmm. until coming out of Florida mm -hmm. and entering the NFL draft. So again, we have someone that has five years of playing experience. We are still not seeing necessarily these subtle movements mm -hmm. um, or going from one to two to three in the confines of the pocket, but at the same time, still having that pure athleticism that creates these explosive gains that we rarely see with mm -hmm. a, a quarterback's legs at the college level. I'm also gonna be curious to see what style offensive coordinator is appealing for this Jaden Daniels uh, type of offense. I think that the spread offense that Brian Kelly developed was perfect. I think that you're gonna want some downfield shots because he can sling the ball like we're talking about. It also will help him out with his rushing ability. This Shanahan tree that keeps growing and growing and growing. I'm not sure if he's gonna be the greatest fit for that uh, specific scheme as well. So I think that's gonna be the other thing is not every single team is gonna love Jaden Daniels. And I think that's where you're gonna see these kind of evaluations going all over the place. So for me, if I'm just taking this from a bird's eye view, I would still take him early round one grade. I don't think that he's as good as Drake May. I actually have J JJ McCarthy ranked higher than him as well. I appreciate Jaden Daniels game. I think that he can pass the ball better than some people wanna give him credit for. Totally. Um, but I do think that there are question marks in this profile, but at the end of the day, uh, I want the athletic quarterbacks in the NFL. That's just where we're going. And just lumping some athletic quarterbacks together. I know a lot of people were wary of Anthony Richardson last year versus Jane Daniels this year. You all might think I'm crazy for saying this. I would have rather stuck with Anthony Richardson and I would have ranked him higher in a two year sample. I have than Jane yes. Daniels this season as well. But again, I don't want to gloss over the fact that it's consistent, accurate throwing motion deep downfield passes like let's say Jalen Hurts did not exist and again this Eagles offensive infrastructure was there you could place him in that and you would see a super explosive offense mm -hmm. yep, in my I opinion agree. and it um, fits that almost exactly but I remember how let's say the Eagles offense kind of fizzled out last year and who knows if it's the quarterback or the play calling and not attacking the middle of the field but at times they're yeah. connected I think the same issues could pop up here with Jaden Daniels as well and if you're playing fantasy football dynasty a lot of these issues that we have with Jaden Daniels, they don't really translate <laughs> to the to the fantasy stuff. You could refresh the box where he'll average 60, 70 rushing yards per game, and you'll you'll live with any of the negatives if they do come up. Yeah, and again, we have no height and no weight. The man does not get hit normally at all. Crash chest on me at times, but that is something that we have seen quarterbacks learn in the NFL as well. Okay, over the last 28 days, only 22% of you that have been watching content just like this have hit that subscribe button, have hit the thumbs up button. So change that. We have plenty of draft profiles rolling up and through the NFL draft. So come back, watch more videos, and we'll see you all next time.